Last time we created the trunk and the main branches. Now we'll work on the higher branching levels. Um, the easiest way to continue creating branching levels is simply to copy the first branching level. So left click branch 1, then uh, perform a control left click and drag um, onto the third position in the hierarchy of the branch and you'll create a copy of the first branch. Of course we also could rename it or we should rename it to a branch 2. In my eyes the second branching level looks too massive so um, I'm left clicking the control points of the thickness curve uh, and uh, drag those control points downwards so that the um, branches look a little bit slimmer. To keep better control over the number of branches, I'll go for the node growth parameter of the parent branch, branch 1, and uh, increase the node growth, growth curve, set the values to about 80 and 100 percent, and the rightmost to about 60-65 uh, percent. And as before, um, the branches grow much too long now. Um, we'll change this by working on the uh, path spline of branch 2 itself. So activate the path spline of branch 2 and go for the parameter translation Y. Activate the control points and reduce the value to about 600 units. Let's say, see if this is already okay. Yes, I think now the length is absolutely okay. And actually we are um, almost done with our second branching level. Uh, now I want to show you something um, that you perhaps will need uh, pretty often. In many cases you want the secondary branching level to start well in the outer regions of the parent branch. Um, Therefore we have the distribution uh, parameter. So go for branch 1 and take a look at the node distribution curve. If you want to move the branches outwards, um, then the well uh, control points at the right part of the curve have to be in the upper area, so you have to increase those values and you'll notice how the branches start to move outwards and if you want to have a low um, density of branches then you'll have to um, well use low values at the base part. So a curve like this will move the branches in the outer area. But this also brings up um, some problems. Uh, to make it more clear I'll reduce the noise um, of the curvature spline of the parent branch um, back down to uh, zero so that we have well straight branches. Now you can see uh, that the deviation branch deviation object um, only works in those areas where uh, branches emerge and well this is not very realistic because often um, the main branch also um, twiggles around in this area. Uh, only the older branches, um, well, are gone, broken by the wind or something like that. Um, so what can we do to simulate the deviation in the base um, area of our tree or branch uh, when moving uh, most branches in the outer region? Therefore, we can make use of the variation object. So add a variation object to the scene, drag it onto the third position in the hierarchy of branch 1, and then drag branch 2 inside this variation object. You'll have to um, deactivate and reactivate so that the branches appear. Um, so now it's the uh, same um, look, of course. Then add a null object to the scene 
and also drag it into the variation object and then change the variation type from random to spread now um, um, the variation object uh, takes uh, the null objects in this area and later on switches to branch 2 and now we simply have to uh, change the node distribution curve so that the well child the children are um, distributed um, regularly and now you can see because we have a null object as child the main branch starts to deviate to twiggle around also in the base area so this is a well nice um, trick or a nice technique to create those deviation um, um, deviated branches um, with the child branches only in the outer areas of uh, the main branch. You also could use this technique to uh, place some old broken branches in the base area. So if you use the curvature spline as the pass spline, don't forget to um, reactivate the noise and I think this already looks pretty nice and for the following branching levels you can use the same technique that we used until now so here you can see the hierarchy that I have until now as I said I simply copied branch 2 used it as branch number 3 um, I replaced the profile spline the circle by an n-sided spline and uh, then um, uh, used three sides as parameter uh, this produces uh, much fewer polygons uh, than a circle spline so especially in the higher uh, branching levels this is a, a good way to save polygons so I think now it's time for you to do the fine tuning um, you can use the node angle parameters to uh, change the alignment of the branches in which they uh, start growing out of the parent branches you could use um, the distribution to change um, um, well the distribution of the branches um, and also using the parameters node growth or density if you want to change um, a separate or several uh, parts of the tree uh, wants to have uh, some parts which are more dense uh, or less dense uh, so I think this is uh, a good way to just play around with those parameters until you're um, happy with the look of your tree perhaps you also want to add another branching level this is up to you of course this will produce much more polygons um, I think as next step I'll add a leaf um, to our tree so watch out for the next uh, upcoming video